Now you may have seen on my channel that MagSwitch makes some great tools for woodworking, but they also do some massive awesome stuff in other industries, like these magnetic based drills that can clamp onto a pipe or a beam for portable hole drilling. Now the pull force on the magnets on this drill is a thousand pounds, and I thought that would be enough to mount a power feeder, which it turns out I really needed when I was making the shelves to store all the vice parts, because I had a whole lot of rips to make, hundreds of them, and a power feeder really speeds this up. I don't fatigue, you know, I can't claim that my safety and the last cut's going to be as good as the first one, so I was really happy to have that solution. It worked out really good for me and mag switch like the idea and i'm glad because this isn't a production shop i can't be drilling and tapping holes in my table saw that really only works if you have more than one saw and can leave the power feeder set up permanently so they put together and are pre-selling a kit that gives you everything you need to build this base except the plywood uh, and that includes a cork rubber that goes on the bottom for extra grip now I had to work from the dimensions of the magnets themselves, but if you buy the kit, MagSwitch has put together really good instructions to fabricate the wooden components. Uh, and you get those right away, so you can start on those uh, and have them ready for the rest of the kit that ships in May. Now the really only nuanced part of this build is when you join the wood that holds the magnets to the wood that mounts the base. So as I'm doing this, I've got two pieces of construction paper underneath the magnets so that they're just very slightly raised above the table. So if I line everything up this way and drill a couple holes to get everything in this position permanently, then when I go to clamp those magnets down, they'll still get to the table. That thousand pounds of forest is going to overcome that tiny little air gap, but there's a little bit of compression built into the system for good firm fit with the table. So this worked great, and I really appreciate MagSwitch working with me to make this possible for my shop and maybe for yours if you like the idea. But I think now is also a good time to announce a career change for me. You see, this whole time that I've been making videos and coming up with products and selling products and vices and pencil kits and packing them and doing all this stuff and working hard, I've had a full-time job entirely outside of the woodworking industry. I've been working for Cargill, a big agricultural company, for the last 18 years. And I just resigned and I'm going full-time with MagSwitch. Now I say full-time, I'm still going to be doing my own thing uh, and maybe even bringing them together in some ways like I am with this channel. But the point is, now I really am full-time on woodworking and tools because that's what I'm going to be doing for MagSwitch. So this is a really exciting career change for me. Uh, my channel is definitely not going to turn into a MagSwitch commercial when we have exciting stuff to announce. I'll do it here. It's just only natural, but I'm still going to be uh, showing my own ideas and building furniture and keeping this channel largely independent. So I'll wrap it up by just saying I'm really excited for what we can do together, MagSwitch and myself, uh, and I hope you are too, so stay tuned. And for now, you can use the link in the description for 10% off the magnetic power feeder base kit uh, or any other product that MagSwitch sells. Now before the discount, the magnetic base kit is selling for $295. And the thought is that if this is a popular concept, a fully integrated tool with a whole pattern that's compatible with power feeders on the market would be sold and that would be a price range of somewhere north of $500. So if you like this concept uh, and don't mind saving some money by doing a quick build, then this kit is what you want. Now, one of the concerns that I think people might have is whether or not this is strong enough. So here's a demonstration that shows why I'm confident enough in it. The power feeder itself has two joints that allow it to pivot and rotate up and down. So here you see me uh, moving it in, in those two dimensions. So it inherently has those joints and they're tightened up by hand with these two levers. So I'm going to give a good amount of, of pressure and, and then see what breaks loose first. And you can see the joint moves if I if I push it in the up down direction and also in the swivel direction. It's not the base that's giving first. So this gives me enough confidence that the base is stronger than the weak points that exist on the tool itself, so it's not going to cause me any problems. But you be the judge, do what you believe is safe in your shop. Now you should also check out this video by Paul Jackman where he uses pallet wood to make the base for the power feeder, which is channel appropriate material for him. Uh, and this video by James King where he uses exotic wood, also channel appropriate material. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.